Before I start, I want to make a few things very, very clear. No, I don't hate fun. I actually love fun. I just don't think this movie was very fun. I have been a Godzilla fan for as long as I can remember. I have loved the Big G since childhood. I'm not a tourist or a fake fan. I know I had very different feelings about this movie in the past, but I'm only changing my mind because I'm not a robot. I am not static. I don't believe one thing forever. Over time, my feelings on GXK have changed. I changed my mind after spending more time on thinking about the subject, and it's just that simple. I'm not some grifter, I'm just a human being. I am not going to compare GXK to minus one. I even made a whole rant video about why it's silly for people to do that. I think minus one is far superior, but I understand that these two are very different movies that are aiming to do very different things. Some of you might be wondering why I just said all that. Well, unfortunately, some MonsterVerse fans think that if you criticize this movie, you either hate fun, are not a real Godzilla fan, or are just glazing minus one. And if anybody in the comments tries to tell me I'm doing any of these things, I'll know that you either haven't watched the video or you probably just aren't worth talking to. I am only going to take part in civil discourse. I am not at all interested in wasting my time with some stupid, immature, back and forth silly business. So if you disagree with something I say, you will have my full respect and attention as long as you act like an adult and treat me and my opinion with the same respect that I will treat yours. Please and thank you. Anyway, let's get on with this. I had just seen Godzilla X Kong for the first time, and the credits were rolling. In that moment, I thought I enjoyed it. I mean, I got what I came for, right? Dumb, fun monster action? Well, sort of. See, even back when I thought I liked it, I still wasn't entirely sure. I still felt unsatisfied. Almost like I was walking out of the theater with an empty stomach. My thirst for good MonsterVerse content just wasn't quenched. I've been involved in many discussions about this movie, both with me trying to defend it and, of course, me criticizing it. Through those discussions and through hearing what others have to say, I gotta admit, I was kinda coping. Godzilla X Kong The New Empire was not what I wanted. I went back and rewatched Godzilla 2014, King of the Monsters, and Kong Skull Island recently. The tone of those three films and the way they treat the kaiju is all vastly different. I personally prefer this previous tone, and going back to rewatch those movies has honestly made me realize how many issues I really have with GXK. In the moment, in theaters, I guess I kinda enjoyed it a little bit, but now that I think about it, I believe I wanted to like the movie a little too much. And that's my personal mistake. I don't think you should try to like things. I don't think you should try to hate things either, of course. But I also think trying to like things will just straight up set you up for failure later on. I think you should go in with an open mind, ready to accept the fact that it might be good or it might also be bad. And after some reflection, I don't think I did that. Godzilla X Kong is not trying to be some cinematic masterpiece, and that's completely fine. According to the director and many fans of the movie, this film is trying to lean more into the vibe of Godzilla's Showa era. To do that, the movie prioritizes silliness and fun, wild monster fights over substance. But just because it has that priority doesn't mean the movie has none of that. Enter Kong, arguably the current main character of the MonsterVerse, and objective main character of this movie alone. Kong, for the past two films, has been lonely. Godzilla vs. Kong set him in Hollow Earth for the remainder of his days, allowing him to traverse that world and get closer to finding the home and family he has been longing for since 2017's Skull Island. But when he finds his people in Godzilla x Kong, there is one force of darkness standing in his way, keeping him from a life of happiness. Enter the Scar King, my personal second favorite now, villain of the entire MonsterVerse. 
Scar King is a bad guy. How do you know this? Well, thanks to an exposition dump, we find out that Scar King is a really nasty individual with a clear obsession over control. He wants things done his way, and he'll do anything to get it his way. And one of the things he did to get that was enslave his species, along with another creature we'll get to in a minute, and do very bad things to women. Things that probably resulted in Suko, if you uh, get where I'm coming from. Scar King is Kong's King Ghidorah, in a way. Another false king keeping the rightful ruler away from his prize. In Godzilla's case, Ghidorah was simply standing in the way of Godzilla's role as protector and ruler. In Kong's case, Scar King is keeping him from his own title of King Kong, but most importantly, family. Oh, by the way, speaking of uh, Suko, that little guy was actually handled very well. I honestly thought Suko was just going to be a poor excuse for marketing and plush toys, but I think he's gotten me to warm up to him. When him and Kong first meet, you can tell he's scared. He comes from a place of fear and abuse. Scar King, being the guy he is, would probably beat the crap out of Suko if he just looked at him the wrong way, right? So it's nice to see him warm up to Kong's merciful nature. I mean, yeah, he uses the kid as a weapon at first, but like, whatever, just look past that. By the end of the movie, Kong has clearly rubbed off on the kid, and Suko basically has a new dad. And that, my friends, is unfortunately where the good stuff ends for me. Before I start, just because I know you people and your ways, I am going to say it one more time. This is my own gosh diddly darn opinion, and I am allowed to have it. Thank you. Silly movies don't have to be stupid. There, I said it. This movie tries to go back to the Showa era's way of doing things, but I honestly think it did that the wrong way. I'm gonna make a more detailed video on this topic, but I think the Showa films have become heavily misrepresented. While these movies are silly, most of them aren't just plain stupid. I think there's a difference that people fail to acknowledge. People will look at one picture of Godzilla doing a tail slide and just assume that the entire era is as ridiculous and nonsensical as that one image. As a result, they completely ignore everything the era's movies have to say and pretend the movies are just stupid nonsense slop where Godzilla plays hockey with a boulder and flies using his atomic breath. Godzilla x Kong is close to being a good Showa film, but it just doesn't hit the mark for me personally. Godzilla should not be in the movie, neither should Shimo. Godzilla does nothing but kill 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 and acts as a side piece the whole time. I mean, honestly, if you did get rid of him, you could have probably used that time to spend more time on Kong, Suko, and Scar King. Go ahead and develop them even further, you know? But no, we gotta sell toys and make the movie more marketable, so why not throw Godzilla in and find something for him to do along the way? I mean, even his final fight with Shimo is more or less just those two tackling each other. The focus is clearly on Kong, so just scrap Godzilla and commit to that. And I am saying this as a Godzilla fan. I want to see more of MonsterVerse Godzilla too, but not if he's just going to be a weird side piece the whole time. Godzilla spends the whole time charging up, getting ready to fight Shimo and Scar King, and then he fights them with Kong and just goes home. A few minutes ago, I put Kong's story into more words than this because I actually can. Like, I'm not just trying to dumb this down to sound smart. I genuinely can't think of any way Godzilla was expanded upon here. Especially when you take into account Adam Wingard's commentary that I will surely talk about soon enough. Now, as for Shimo, she's literally only there to give Godzilla something to fight. Like, she doesn't have any other reason to exist. She also apparently froze Ghidorah, which is... I mean, alright. I feel like that really contradicts King of the Monsters and makes a small plot hole even bigger, but uh, you know what? Fine. Let's just run with it. Whatever. Also, Shimo apparently freezes the ground whenever she walks, right? Because she's just that cold. So, like, how do Scar King or Kong not get frostbite when they touch or ride her? I mean, 
does the ice only come out of her feet or i don't want to talk about these guys but i have to the human characters suck all of them i hate them except trevor he was fun i want him to be in the next one but bernie was just a poor excuse for comic relief really annoying and oh my god he dumped so much exposition how does he just put together all this fancy EOE technology by looking at it. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. G is a chosen one now? Why? Why do we need a chosen one? Is that Mothra? What's she even doing here? Hey, has the egg from King of the Monsters hatched? I, is that the, the same one then? I mean, it, oh, okay. I, I guess that makes sense, right? The egg probably hatched and she must have, like, traveled from the surface down to the Hollow Earth for some reason. And, uh, yeah. She just appears out of thin air for some reason, but no, yeah, I can, I can run with that. Are you kidding me? This wasn't even the same Mothra? There's another one? How many are there? Well, where's the one from King of the Monsters? What is happening? Yeah, look, Adam, buddy, you gotta stop shooting yourself in the foot with this commentary. Like, come on. I mean, you never explained it in the movie, like, a few things, but you just gotta stop. The light in the Hollow Earth comes from crystals? Uh, no it does not. Stop it. You guys totally just rendered a sun in there. Those are not crystals. Godzilla and her have a thing. And the only titan that Godzilla truly likes and respects is uh, Mothra. So if there, if there was ever a situation where Godzilla was going to hold the door open for another titan, it would always be Mothra. And Godzilla and her have a thing. Godzilla and Mothra are a thing, and Mothra is the only titan Godzilla respects. So, does everything Kong and Godzilla have been through just mean nothing to him? I, GVK and GXK are both just worthless to Godzilla as a character now? Is that really what we're saying? I mean, I just... I don't know, man. I don't hate Adam Wingard. I'm not one of those people, but he is like really not doing it for me at all this time how about instead of explaining stupid useless stuff like that you explain how the monsterverse suddenly has so much futuristic sci-fi technology 2014 and king of the monsters all had mostly just modern technology king of the monsters was the only exception but the technological jump was pretty believable in a fictional world and didn't go too far but now in gvk and gxk we suddenly have all these hovercrafts i mean where did these even come from? Did I miss something? Am I stupid? I don't know. I don't think this was never explained. So why not explain stuff like that instead of useless stuff that just makes it harder for me to enjoy your movie? I'm sorry, but this, 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 this just does not work for me. Like, you totally could have just not had the hovercrafts in GVK and introduced them in GXK by saying that some materials discovered in Hollow Earth allowed you to construct them. That'd be fine, right? Oh, also, uh, last thing. I'm tired of talking about this, so last thing. <clears throat> Why does Scar's crystal control Shimo? Oh, it probably came from her body. Oh, I, okay, yeah, but how does that even work? Like, I, if I just pluck a hair off your body, can I control you with it? I, is this voodoo or something? I, like, it's gotta be something else, right? Okay, wait, last, last thing. So, Kong is in Egypt. He challenges Godzilla to get him to lock in and get over there quicker. Godzilla gets over there, Kong is clearly telling him that he isn't actually here to fight, and Godzilla attacks him anyway. Okay, he's being a douchebag, fine, whatever. But then Mothra shows up and has to tell Godzilla to stop being a big baby. That's so lame. Like, I'm sorry, but that's lame. Let me make it better, okay? Or at least try to. I don't know. I don't want to sound cocky. Godzilla attacks Kong, and they get into their fight, right? But instead of Mothra having to tell Godzilla to behave, Kong gets Godzilla into, like, a chokehold or something. Maybe he's got him pinned down. I don't know. He's struggling to keep Godzilla down. And in a fit of rage and frustration, Kong just starts screaming, yelling, roaring at Godzilla, trying to get him to stop. Godzilla's help is all Kong needs. Kong is one fight away from having everything he has ever wanted. A new home and family is right there. And this lizard decides to put one more obstacle in Kong's way. How about instead of being told to stop because Godzilla should respect Kong, he begins to understand all this and Godzilla willingly stands down so they can go fight together. 
Huh? Is that not cool? I mean, would that not be cool? Like, come on. Ugh. Alright. So, uh... You've reached the end of my video. Uh, I hope I made a few sound, solid points if you disagreed with me. But if if you still disagree with me wholeheartedly, if you don't think I made any good points, I, then I would appreciate it if you uh, pointed that out in the comments section. I'd love to have a discussion about all this. I like discussions. Uh, do you agree with me on all this stuff? Do you disagree with me? Did I make good enough points? Did I get anything wrong? Uh, yeah, stuff like that. <clears throat> and this wasn't in the script, by the way, but one more complaint I do actually have. I forgot to write this one down. Mothra didn't do anything in this movie, other than be part of the weird, stupid Chosen One storyline and tell Godzilla to stop being a big baby. She didn't do anything, really. Like, even when... Okay. Like, I know she had a limited appearance in King of the Monsters 2, but she was at least part of the final battle in that movie, right? She at least played a role in the final battle. An important role in the final battle, right? But in this movie, she shows up for the Chosen One Gia stuff, and then tells Godzilla to stop being stupid. And then she just goes away. She and just... I. She's not even really a part of the final battle in Rio. Like, I, I, why was she not in Rio with with Kong and Godzilla? I don't understand that. I, like, why did we not see more of her? I don't understand. But whatever. Uh, I don't know. It's I, I. I would have rather her not been in this movie. I would have rather it just been like a Kong solo movie all around. Just Scar King, Suko, and Kong, and that's it. I would have preferred that so much. I think it could have been so much better if it was just those three being the main focus. But, yeah, yeah, um, mm. alright, uh, I, hopefully this is my last time on this channel talking about this movie because I don't, I'm, I'm kind of tired of talking about it and I want to move on to other things, I have other stuff planned, I don't want to just linger on this for so long, so. Hopefully, hopefully, it's, uh, hopefully I am able to move on from this movie. I would very much like to. <sighs> boy, oh boy. But yeah, uh, if you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. I, uh, am probably going to have some more content like this in the hopefully near future. Uh, I've got a lot of projects going on right now for YouTube. I'm working on a lot of videos that are probably going to be pretty big, honestly. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'll try and do as much as I can in a, a, a short time span. But I don't want to rush anything, though, so... Uh, yeah, don't... Uh, don't push me, I guess. I don't know. Actually, no, I almost forgot to ask my, my big question of each video. Um, I don't know. I'm just making this a thing now. Uh, what is your guys' favorite... Uh, what's your favorite M&M color? Mine is... Uh, uh, I don't know. Blue. Because I like blue. There is a blue one, right? I, th I think there's a blue one. Yeah. There should be a blue one. I think so. But yeah, I, I, my favorite M&M color is blue. What's yours? Alright. Yeah, I'll see ya.